Peter Webby is a streamer extraordinaire and all around nice guy. And I was incredibly grateful to get the opportunity to talk to him for the Streamers of Consciousness podcast. We talk about everything from his early gaming experiences on the Game Boy Advance with Pokemon, all the way through to his very first PC build. And I have to tell you, Peter has one of the most unusual stories about how he managed to fund that first PC build. So make sure you look out for that. Whether you're a streamer, a content creator, or just a gamer, there's going to be so much interesting stuff in this episode for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and if you think I missed any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments and I'll see if I can sneak them over to Peter and get an answer for you. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Peter, thank you so much for making the time no to worries. come into uh, this little virtual studio. I think we could be in the same space. We could convince people that we're in the same room. Yeah, why not? I, yeah, I just need just... to get some. I need to get some of your plants. Actually, I've been meaning to get some plants in the background. I need they to are... try and figure that out. It's just a constant battle for me to keep things alive. <laughs> it uh, have to like, be artificial in here. There is no between way. Between the plants and kids, there's a lot of stress. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks so much. Uh, we have, like... I, I say we have been gravitating towards each other. We've kind of been rotating around each other, probably yeah. more towards me towards you than you towards me. But we've been in and out of each other's streams on TikTok. Um, considering TikTok is such a big place, it seems it's... It seems that you you end up in the quite a little small group of people that you actually get to watch. Um, so I wanted to talk to you for a while. Uh, I kind of have aspirations to be where you're at with the numbers you're getting. It's very really oh great. Oh God, don't to say see. that. No, no, that's it. That's it. You, you've become that aspirational oh, figure don't. now. That's mad. Uh, before we get into your <laughs> before we get into your huge streaming success um, and uh, you know the beacon of light that all streamers uh, are looking towards, uh, I want to take you back to a young Peter. Uh, roaming around the streets of wherever you were born. Well, from uh, South End, yeah. <laughs> South End. Uh, and, and understand how you got into gaming or whether gaming was even a thing of your youth. Like, where did you start out in terms of gaming? That's a really interesting thing. Um, so, I guess I uh, my earliest memories of it was having a Game Boy Advance, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just sort of a little sort of handheld thing. I never, um, I never had the Game Boy Color. I went straight to the Game Boy Advance, and that like I think I must have just by a few years missed that era as a kid. Um, right. And yeah, but I, I loved it. That was obviously the old uh, purple one where there was no backlight. So when you're in the car on the way to places and it was dark, you'd have to use the street lights <laughs> to kind of get yourself. Listen, uh, I, I, I get feel yourself like you made me. Feel quite old here because I think the first Game Boy I had was the grey one. <laughs> Wicked. Uh, <laughs> I love I'm, that. I'm, I'm hoping in the back of my mind that that's just because that was in the house, not because. Yeah, that's no, no, how for old sure, I am. for yeah. sure. No, no, no yeah. absolutely, it wasn't brand new. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I suppose so. That was my earliest memories in playing Pokemon. A lot of that. Yeah. Um, and then I always remember sort of, I suppose, late primary, early secondary school, all of my friends having a sort of a PS2. Um, yes. And that being really cool. And then for Christmas, I said to my mum and dad, I'd love a PS2. That would be like my, my top thing if you could. Um, and then, you know, we went through the whole day, still nothing there. And then all of a sudden the big box comes out. I'm like, come on. Uh, and I'll unwrap it. And it was an original Xbox instead. And um, I was what, I was under sort what of a, what a curve. <laughs> yeah, it was it, because I, I really didn't. It didn't even occur to me that that was like a, a thing that I would ever have. And so it was kind of a mixture of like, oh, that's interesting. And and then from there, I was kind of Xbox the whole way. Um, until... I love the fact that I love the fact that you, as a child, made the decision to be a PlayStation guy. And yeah. your parents are like, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not, not. Peter. We're, not we're not having one of those in the house. Yeah. You'll be on Xbox. <laughs> it was it was mad, really, because, yeah, it was, um, I, I just, uh, and I love that whole ecosystem. We had, uh, obviously, Halo, uh, I absolutely loved, mm -hmm. um, and sort of grew up with all of those sort of Xbox classics, I suppose. But there's a lot of nostalgia around nintendo for a lot of people that i don't really have because we never yeah. I, I never had a gamecube uh in in the house at all so that, that like none of that triggers anything for me all the old playstation stuff like your spyros and that kind of thing just doesn't trigger anything for me but yeah. um whereas yeah a, a, a good friend of mine has been playstation his whole life and he doesn't really understand the, no the nostalgia around halo either so it's, it's an interesting yeah 
thing, really. Um, I, I've, got, I've got quite a unique position of like, I had like a probably a PlayStation Two, mm. but basically didn't play games for most of the kind of towards the end of my childhood into my adult years didn't play place basically the first console that i got after the, i had a switch for a little bit but the first proper console i got was the playstation 5 release so i have no nostalgia yeah any it's, games. It's a mad place to be isn't it really? so all of these people going oh you have to play GTA <laughs> City. i'm like well i don't yeah because it's actually, 20 years old now <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's better stuff about I'm, yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm judging these games based on like how i feel about them now not, yeah not based that's on actually really rock stuff I think that's a good angle to come from, to be fair, because you're kind of judging a game on its own merit rather than... Because th yeah. these days, any Mario game that comes out, bang, it's like 90 out of 100 score. And it's like, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> is yeah, that, but is is that it, from yeah. the nostalgia or is that because it is a very, really good game? I don't know. I, I, I haven't played them to know that, really. Yeah, it's, di it's a difficult thing to get over in the gaming industry in general, I think, is that I think basically console wars and mm -hmm. uh, people's reviews... Not not necessarily uh, industry reviews of games, but people's reviews of games are so heavily based on what they played. What as came a kid. before? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, what yeah. came before? And well, I've talked quite a lot about this with um, you know with with my friends around GTA Six. It's like, is it ever going to live up to the hype of what people expect from Rockstar? No. Probably not. It doesn't no, matter how absolutely good it not. Is. No, it all like it's because everyone builds up an idea of what it's going to be in their head, um, yeah. and I think that's what was the downfall of games like Mass Effect Andromeda, for instance. Everyone had mm -hmm. in their mind what that game was going to be, and it wasn't that game. And so everyone, oh, it's a bad game. Yes, it yeah. was full of bugs when it first launched. But after they fixed all that, I stand by the fact that that is actually, a sta on a standalone prospect, a very good game. Yeah. Um, but I do think some games get very unfairly treated based on what's happened before it. Yeah, I think I think I think you're right. So so you you, you started off on your Game Boy and mm -hmm. were firing through that. Uh, got uh, forced into the Xbox ecosystem. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and then seemed quite glad about that by now. Yeah, um, that was all right. Uh, and then had the 360 when that yep. came out, um, and twice got the Red Rings of Death. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. I've so, heard about yeah. this mythical thing. Isn't there a whole documentary around this now? Yeah, it, it, actually, I, I think they they that whole documentary actually handles that really well um, because it was really bad. That should have been, and these days it would be the end of that company completely. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I I remember sort of reading about it and just going, oh, it's never going to happen to me," and then turning it on one day and going, "Oh no!" <laughs> like just instantly knowing what it was. Um, yeah. But by that point, they'd kind of already admitted that things had gone wrong. And I mean, the, the amount of money they must have spent to because uh, it was literally just do a form online. They sent you a big box. You put your Xbox in it, shipped it off to wherever it was going to go. And the first time it happened, they repaired it and sent it back again all right. for free. The next time it happened, they just gave me a brand new console. So it like the, the amount of money that that would have cost for to, to do that for everyone would have been astronomical but i mean we say that would be the end of them but samsung basically created mini bombs didn't true they? <laughs> and that's, they yeah that's true yeah. yeah 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 suppose so you would think um, you would think people going actually if you've got this phone you're not allowed to you're not allowed to leave your country anymore that people <laughs> might go i'm never gonna buy yeah, samsung again i hadn't really thought of that but the uh, yeah I, th I just think the uh, and i still argue that actually for that generation the 360 was the best console in that generation, easily, right. hands down. Um, which, which is just crazy how they ma managed to, with all of that stuff that was going on, that they still managed to turn it around and have it be the yeah. best console of that generation. I, I make the argument, and, and again, I, I come at this from a weird place, right? Because I'm not, I don't mm -hmm. yeah. have this relationship with, you know, what it was like to own older consoles, or I'm not bought into any particular ecosystem. I basically bought the PS5 because. Um, the the exclusives at that time looked mm -hmm. like they were going to be better yeah. for me, um, and I I argue that the, the kind of hardware and stuff is less relevant for ninety nine percent of people, and that's not the mm -hmm. reason that ninety nine percent of people buy these consoles. I come at this from a marketing background, and I go, people <laughs> people don't maybe maybe that's part of the decision, but largely it comes down to like what games do you play or what mm -hmm. is your what is your nostalgia what piques your to, interest, to, I guess, yeah, yeah exactly. 
So do you think do you think it was a better console at that time because the games that were available on it, or like what was your what's your kind of reasoning mm. for saying that that is a better console? I think that's really interesting. Uh, I think the just the, the the breadth of games that were coming out in that era were just it was just insane. You just couldn't keep up mm. playing like all, all of the all the games that were coming out, and I, I just think that the um, they were a lot more innovative in terms of the way that they did online gameplay as well. I mean, that started to come on the original Xbox, but I think the 360 really sort of signaled the start of this, like, en masse online, uh, you know, gaming across everyone. Like, Halo 3 online on the 360 was just mental. Like, to, yeah. to be able to have... I, I, I could be completely wrong, so please don't quote me on it, but I think they started to have games that had sort of 32 64 players online mm. whereas like i don't think again could be wrong but other like the, i don't think the playstation handled that yeah to, I to that extent much, mate. i don't i don't think i don't think quotes like this are going to be the yeah thing <laughs> just, yeah now. just uh I, I don't know but <laughs> I, don't, I, I feel like yeah i just feel like the 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 ecosystem around that sort of era was they just got it right yeah uh, it's really difficult to describe i think and it feel it feels to me again maybe I have developed a bit of a bias being a being a PlayStation Five owner. It feels to me like in more recent years, Xbox has struggled to keep up or has fell off in some ways. Do you think that's down to the the exclusives? Do you think it's down to it being mm. part of the Microsoft ecosystem? Like wh where do you think that? So kind of I falls? think they've completely changed direction, and that, uh, whereas it used to be a console war where mm -hmm. the, the, the big thing was the consoles and, you know, you, you get these games. But where now Microsoft have completely gone into PC gaming massively, mm -hmm. I think they've completely changed their direction. It, it, it doesn't make sense to compare the two companies anymore because they, mm -hmm. they do very different things. Uh, you know, Game Pass, for instance, it, I would still argue is the best value for money in gaming you, you're you're going to get anywhere. It's it's yeah. crazy the amount for the amount you pay, what you get, yeah. um, and I think they're going just on the we're going to give you everything as much as possible of everything. And if you want to play games, we are the people to go to. Mm -hmm. Whether that is a console, whether that is playing on your PC. Like I didn't get the Series X because I had a gaming PC. I was like, mm -hmm. there, there's no point in me in me getting a Series X because I've got this and I can play everything I want to on here. Whereas I think PlayStation is more for the, in quotes, serious gamer that loves AAA titles with really immersive stories that can really just harness every single inch of power you can get from that console. I think that's what PlayStation do very, very well mm. is these massive titles that are just graphically incredible and just will... I, I could only ever run on a PlayStation. You know what I mean? Like, there's there was this whole like, oh, the Xbox is the world's most powerful console, blah blah blah. blah. But if you're not going to harness and use that power, then I, I just think that the style of PlayStation games are very unique to them, and I think they do very very well at very high quality games. So I, I think that's where the difference is. There's not many indie games necessarily on PlayStation. Yeah. You've got yeah. all your your big names and kind of that's where they sit they do very very well at that whereas xbox i think are very much now lots of indies oh and here are a few triple a titles by the way yeah that's kind of where i think you're right because I, I think i've been very lucky over the past I think, what is it like three four years since the playstation 5 was released it feels like there's been something absolutely epic for me mm. to play all of the time and then obviously i had this backlog of triple a games to play as well but the at the moment and PlayStation have just said, hey, we're not releasing any like, AAA stuff from our existing franchises for the next year. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, there's not, <laughs> there's not a huge amount of yeah. to do. I mean, there is, there is lots of stuff. I was going to say, you, you've got a huge backlog to get through of stuff that's there released in the last backlog. few years. So. Um, but I, I'm interested to hear how you went into PC gaming. Again, yeah. I, th I think the kind of delineation between these things is getting a little bit more blurred with things like mm -hmm. cloud gaming and, and Game Pass and stuff. I recently bu built my first ever gaming PC. Fantastic! Um, after after being after being the guy that said I I will never do yeah, that. That was me. I, <laughs> to be clear, I'm the guy where if there's a light switch broken in the house, 
We need to call a man for that, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I ain't touching that. <laughs> exactly. I'm not I'm, qualified I'm not, to be touching I'm that. I'm not that guy. I am not that guy. <laughs> However, for some reason, partly because of content, and partly because I was like, I had a PC and I was like, re- really just because I wanted to stream uh, mm-hmm. and it was an old PC, I just streamed through it. I basically used PlayStation Remote Play for most of my, the start of my career. And then I was like, if this thing breaks, no idea. I have no yeah. idea what's going yeah, yeah, on yeah, in yeah. there. I don't know what the spec of the thing is. Uh, and I was a Mac user for, for all of oh, my editing and everything. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey man. If you like if you like if you like a machine that can heat up a small area of your room, then open Premiere Pro on your Mac oh, and yeah, you're, you're in a sweet, sweet position. <laughs> uh, I've given it a little bit of a rest now, I've got this gaming PC. But yeah, I decided, hey, I'm gonna build this gaming PC. And actually it was a really fascinating experience and I really look it was mm. it was horrifically stressful. And yep. uh, simultaneously, one of the most wonderful things to see it working at the end. But I'm curious how you got to that of going, you know, you know what I need to do is build something that might break at any moment so I can play games on it. <laughs> yeah, so funnily enough, the reason that I actually did it was because of streaming. And mm. that's a, like, it wasn't, the, the, the first priority wasn't to play games on it. It was yeah. that I started off, when I really started to sort of go for it, I was streaming uh overwatch on my playstation mm-hmm. just through the playstation um yes, yeah, yeah. and i i bought what i bought a camera that from a second hand shop that just sort of attached to it there's a yeah, little yeah. thing in the corner and i was just playing games um and that's when you started to see when i was looking at other streamers they had all these overlays on it all looked really cool and i was like man i like i need that <laughs> and so that, that sort of when it was uh yeah that's that's when i sort of made the decision to go right if i'm gonna do this then i need to get a i need to get a pc if i'm gonna do it properly Mm -hmm. um it just so happened that around the same time as sort of making that decision in my head that it's a very long story but i'll keep it short basically i went on holiday to lanzarote went down a water slide uh and wasn't awake when i came out the other end of it (laughs) because i'd hit my head uh and Cut long story short, I got a bit of money from that. <laughs> it's, I'll be uh, honest here, it seems like a lot of trouble to go through to get a yeah, big game in it PC. Was. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, but, just as a caveat for but, anyone, the, the, the 20, 20 people who watch this, uh, yeah, that water slide's yeah. fixed now. You're not getting the game yeah, in PC. I, out of it. I wouldn't recommend it. It wasn't great. Of the five day holiday, I was, what, three and a half days in intensive care. It, oh, dear. But, you know, it, it's fine. It, it, whatever. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know anymore. Um, apart from just my scatty brain, I think it just knocked a few things out of price. Uh, I have that, and I've never had any water slide. But yeah, it was, so. it, it, was, it was just sort of after, after that. Uh, it wasn't much money, but it was enough to build a PC. Yep. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's, let's do it. It was either going on holiday or doing that. And so I disappointed my wife <laughs> and said... I'm, 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 Listen, I'm, as I'm a man who's been through a divorce, <laughs> it might be the yeah. first of many disappointments. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Really sorry. And to be fair, I did buy her a, a Nintendo Switch because that had yeah. just come out and she really wanted that. And I was like, yeah. fine, so I've, I've, I've bought you the Switch. You're happy. And she really wanted to play uh, Animal Crossing, I think was huge at the time. So that was I, like... I don't know why, easy. but I just I um, predicted that was the game. Yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> uh, and so I did that. And then, yeah, I mean, the amount of research i did into building that pc was more than i think i've ever done for anything before because i was just so terrified about getting it wrong um especially when you know the parts aren't cheap and if you put it in wrong and snap something that is it's it's game over (laughs) you've got there's no coming back from it but it was single-handedly one of like the most fun things i ever did was building that i think it's because and it may be different for you but for me right i had exactly the same fear it's like oh i've bought a uh, I bought a CPU that's 500 quid yeah, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and everyone keeps telling me if you bend one of these, if you bend pins, the pins, you're stuffed. <laughs> you, you're stuffed. Oh, and to get it in, you have to like you have to force down a big clamp. That if it's not, you know, it's all of that kind of stuff. There is quite a big barrier to entry, um, and, and I had exactly the same the same fear. But I think what it is here's my theory on why building a PC is something that people should do if they're in in the mm-hmm. gaming space. And it's not really about gaming. It's not that PC gaming is better. It's none of those things because I think there's a lot of cons to Oh, absolutely. Got you, over a you can't just turn a game on these days. No, you've got to fiddle about that 50 settings and then realise, oh, no, you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. You've got to reset. Oh, it's a joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing a game the other day and it's like, oh, I'm just not going to give you any frames now. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're watching this like you're watching Baffling. the first cinema production <laughs> ever. Um, no reason anyway, I, for it at all. 
<laughs> and, and you go, why is it doing this? And people are like, yeah. just turn it off and on again. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm in the middle of a stream. I can't. Yeah. Just, I'm like 18 hours into a 24 hour stream. This is not, I'm not turning the PC off. Anyway, um, I think that my theory is that, and, and this comes from, I spent the my majority of my career in digital marketing, uh, basically didn't create anything physical for probably 15 years mm. and then got into gaming and content creation all of which is also digital i make things but they largely go into the internet and they don't i can't hold it in my hands there's nothing physical right so i think my theory is that when you build a gaming pc it's an extension of the world that you're already in but you've mm. actually done something physical um I, maybe it yeah. made me feel a little bit more of a man <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> because yeah. it's like it feels <laughs> although it is kind of like grown-up lego I think because you're plugging yeah. things into electronics and it looks quite complicated, and I, th- I think yeah, and I think like a, you've got a achievement there. Yeah, you've you've definitely got like a, a product after all that hard work. Have you got like uh, that? This yeah. is my reward for actually, you know, really doing my research and really looking into it and really trying hard. There's a there's yeah. an actual physical thing there at the end of it, and I think that is quite nice. Um, so so you moved to PC. To, for streaming to start with very similar yeah. to, to me actually it's like so I can stream better mm. um, so you talk, you kind of we skated over a little bit you, you started to stream and, and you originally were just doing that from a console mm-hmm. I I was maybe it's just an age thing for me I don't know I, I couldn't understand why people watched other people play games it neither did I mind. yeah no, um, I, and it was more of a thing of I'm playing games all the time anyway why not just why not just put it on like mm. if if it's something that people want to watch, you know what? Like why not? And yeah. I don't know whether it's the performer in me because I I you know did drama at GCSE A level, did it at university, uh, trained as an actor, and mm. then I suppose after that never really dipped back into it. And I think this is kind of my way of scratching that itch of performance in a way. Uh, yeah. And so yeah, that was kind of like. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me sooner of that I love playing games and I love performance. So why not combine those two things? It was like the my, the, the, the two biggest passions I ever had sort of combined. Mm-hmm. So why that didn't connect in my head sooner, I don't know. But I, I suppose I didn't even really know that Twitch was a thing. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't really... I, I think, again, that's where pandemic stuff started to come in. We were looking for things to do. And mm-hmm. and then I realised, oh my god, people do this. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah. let's give it a go. Um, yeah, and, and and it was, I mean, my god, like it was just me with a camera on my face, just playing a game in silence. <laughs> it was it was bad. Nobody, um, nobody but... tells you how much uh, you need to put yourself out there to speak oh for the God. first time on a stream. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's one thing, because I did a bit of that, like, oh, Twitch integrates with PlayStation. I didn't have mm-hmm. a camera or anything. I'll just, like, I'll just put it on there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I could clip stuff up and go, look at this <laughs> shot I hit in Call of Duty, friends. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> I'm good. Um, but yeah, it's to actually use your voice. Mm. And this is coming from someone as well. I had done stand-up uh, when I was uh, in my early no 20s. I'd, oh, cool. Yeah, so I think, actually, that your story of going... I think I think live streaming is is a is a performance element Absolutely. and Absolutely. content is like uh, so so live streaming is a live performance and content is more like here's a TV series that you watch. Mm-hmm. I, I I think they're tied to the same coin, but one is definitely different to the other, and, and they have their own space. So yeah, I did stand up and uh, that kind of stuff, and I think it was exactly the same thing. Is like I had uh, kids when I was in my early twenties. The stand up stuff stopped because. Kids take quite a lot of time, um, <laughs> uh, and I didn't do anything creative or anything that was like truly creative for a long time. And then this came along, and I was like, exactly the same thing. I'm playing games a lot anyway. Why not mm. stream it? And, and to be able to do other creative things like making videos and stuff. So I think that's quite a, quite a similar story. But I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's a performance thing. But do you think because it's video games? I mean, you must get, I get this comment all the time. Maybe it's just because I, I look how I look, but it's like uh, people coming in going, a grown man playing X game or a grown man playing <laughs> games on the internet. You know, that kind of comment. These these are probably, you know, 14 year old kids saying this to me. Yeah. Which is fine. I, I, I don't, I haven't really had that so much. And I don't know yeah. whether it's because I 
am very playful and I think mm-hmm. I you know I, I embrace my youth as as much as I can and just sort of go for it um yeah and, and it's interesting to say about you know older people playing games like those old people playing games are only going to get older and yes. they're still going to be playing games. And I, th- I think it's a really weird landscape at the moment where you do have content creators that are, you know, in their 40s. And mm-hmm. how long are they going to be doing it for? Are we going to be in an era in 30 years time where you've got lots of people creating content still that are in their 60s and 70s and, I, I, and, and appealing to that audience, appealing yeah. to the, the, those like people that look like them and, and where it's not there at the moment because we haven't seen this group of content creators start to sort of make their way through Mm. um, that are sort of, you know, around our ages. And I think that's a really interesting thing. But old people will always play games now, I think. it's You know, and and I think it's, yeah, it is. And I think as well, people like that validity of, oh, hang on, he looks like me. He looks about my age and he's playing games and having fun. I, I feel seen. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I mean? I think that's, that's why I'm hoping a lot of the people who watch me eventually lose their hair because <laughs> that's, that's the moment where I'm, when, when Mel Patton Boldness hits this new generation of kids, yeah, that's absolutely. when I'm really going to come into my eyes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's when it's the in thing and everyone's just doing it on purpose. You're like, I, I was there. I did it. <laughs> if I can bring this back into folk, I've got some, I've got some people I'm battling against. Yeah. Listen, the bold guy with the beard look is, I'm struggling. There's some people out there that are not making it easy for me at the moment. <laughs> um so you so you start streaming and you i guess you're streaming on twitch and it's yep. largely you know just you playing games just you yeah, playing games enough, in the same way that you'd play it in your house yeah for, funnily enough i just on my uh google photo memories today it came up with a picture of me four years ago with my yep. first pc set up um yes. and you know i was like wow like four years ago, I was streaming to three people mm-hmm. uh, for hours and hours a day. Uh, one of those was me watching myself on the PC. One of those was me watching me on my phone. So I could bump up that viewer number a little bit, right? Uh, so look, maybe occasionally I got a third person in, <laughs> yeah. but never really spoke. And, and it was, yeah, like I, for the first time, like I, I've always been someone who has started something and when it got hard i went ah it's not for me Mm -hmm. and this was the first thing that i said to myself you know what like i'm I'm fed up of being this person that never finishes anything Mm -hmm. when it gets hard i'm I'm just gonna go for it i'm just gonna keep going not to a point of detriment but like let's try and find ways around problems and let's really push through anything that gets tough so that you can see what the other side looks like um, and I, I, I really vividly remember saying uh, to my now wife, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like, this is something I'm really serious about. I'm, I'm really going to make this work. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you kind of get the, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> like, as if, well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was like, no, like, I had this, I had this fire. And I was like, this is, it's going to work. And... I suppose, yeah, the first time of me seeing something through and it's kind of paid off. So I wonder what would have happened to all those other things <laughs> that I gave up early on, you know? I think that's... I, I have a little bit of that as well. And I think for for a little while, maybe slightly arrogantly, I, I described myself as a Renaissance man. I wasn't particularly good at lots of things, but mm-hmm. I did... I could, I did lots of things. I basically had lots of interests, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, yeah. And, and very similar to you where it's like, uh well maybe not so but i would pick things up i'd be very obsessive about it for quite a short period of time and then it wouldn't really exist for me and then the, similar to you although the the timeline is shrunk slightly i'm getting stuff on tiktok now it's like here's the content that you produced a year ago mm-hmm. because tiktok likes me to be embarrassed about myself <laughs> once a day um so yeah it, it, it's good because you can see the progress um you can go this is where i was and this is mm. where i am now uh, but i think sometimes you need to go through those things oh for sure and i think often there is a thing of going oh you need to certainly like i don't know my parents generation probably would go you get a job and you stay at that job for Mm -hmm. 20 years or whatever and you that's Mm -hmm. what you do and then you retire and i think my my generation was one of those first generations that would go actually no we're we're gonna jump around 
from job to job to get what's best for us and we're going to try lots of different things and we're going to experience lots of different things so i think that's a good thing right the amount of experience you pick up from all those things that you try actually is massively important and i think we were talking about this the other day is like the amount of things you have to know or learn how to do oh to create God, content yeah. for streaming is is absolutely unbelievable editing I've, designing performing. my skill set has gone like uh, tenfold in, yes. in so many things i didn't even think i needed to uh, but also on the flip side of that, i think uh, you're very good at things you don't actually realize you're good at so when yeah. you actually list down all the things that you do you go like when you think of things like community management and you're like mm -hmm. like I, I don't see myself as a community manager but actually like i suppose i am it's a, you yeah. don't it's only when you sort of see it in professional wording that you go what really <laughs> it's yeah, a, yeah if you put all of the kind of and mind my french here the kind of the wanky corporate yeah, 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 yeah. CV stuff around it, you go, oh, well, if I was to, and, and that's me having come from that, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. world, you, you know, if you apply enough buzzwords around all of this stuff, of course, uh, so many of these skills are, are transferable. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's mad. Um, yeah. So you, you talked about becoming serious about streaming. Yeah. What was, like, what's, what changed from, when you were like, I'm just doing this casually because I'm mm -hmm. doing it anyway. Like, what things did you start to do that you weren't doing before when you said, I'm going to make this, I, I, I want to make this a, a more serious thing? Yeah, I think it was down to research. So mm -hmm. I, when I think, I don't think I necessarily made the decision overnight. It kind of, it happened over a period of time. But I found myself just watching so many YouTube videos and reading mm -hmm. so many articles and getting into people's streams and not going in to watch for enjoyment, but watching analytically and going, mm -hmm. okay, what's working here? Why mm -hmm. does this person have this many viewers? Why, like, how are they interacting with their chat? How is the chat flow? And I would, I just got myself into this hole of, uh, I, of just knowledge, just getting absolutely mm -hmm. everything in and then thinking, how am I going to do that in my own way? Because there's no point copying people zero point because like no one is going to be better at being that person than that person right yeah. so you, you have to do things in your own way but yeah I think I just I found myself really diving into research and really just meticulously planning things out um I would have you know a, a, my whole month's worth of games that I was going to play planned out uh, like I would mm -hmm. know what I was going to play um I whenever a new youtube video, i mean so used to be called uh, alpha gaming now senpai gaming also known as harris heller on youtube mm -hmm. any time he posts a video boom i was on it i was watching it i was taking notes uh any there was sort of four or five youtubers that i would the moment they uploaded i'd be watching it i'd be taking notes i'd be like okay what can i do now and, and mm -hmm. in a way that was it was a good and a bad thing because i think where I was chasing this, I want to be as good as I can be. Actually, I ended up essentially doing what they told me to do, <laughs> which, you know, in, in some ways was good. But in other ways, actually, on reflection, I probably could have done it in a more unique way in my own way. But you, you've got yeah. to, you sort of find those things out along the way, I think. Uh, but yeah, I, I, to, to answer your question, I suppose, yeah, that's when I knew I was that's what switch was the was the research. Interesting. So you were you were watching these YouTubers, and I suppose at that time you were fundamentally like focused on Twitch as a channel. Twitch was, yeah. Was there a, was at that time was there a was there another like there's there's a few different options now for people who want to live stream. But at the time was Twitch just it basically was, what was available in terms of live streaming games? Yeah, it, it was it was pretty much Twitch, and that's it. Facebook gaming was quite big at the time. Oh, yeah. uh, that was kind of your other option, but everyone associates Facebook with sort of mums and dads, don't they? So you kind of like, there, there were some channels that went massive. Oh, and then there was, uh, there was Mixer as well, actually. Mixer was a, a fairly big platform, but then in mm -hmm. the time that I was doing that research, it all collapsed on itself and uh, the whole thing closed. Um, yeah, so it, it was all focused on my Twitch channel. Um, I initially did uh a few streams on my own but for the majority of the two years i would say i was doing twitch i streamed with another streamer 
every single stream. Wow. And the way that worked was uh, he would go live on his channel, I'd go live on mine. Eventually, it got to the point where we had each other's cameras and each other's lives as well. Right. Okay. And we would co-stream, essentially, together yeah. three days a week all the time. It's like the and, Anton Deck of Twitch. Yeah, honestly, it, it was like <laughs> we, we just... And I think in terms of chat, it helped so much because yeah. we, we could bounce off of each other all the time playing games mm -hmm. we talk to each other, even if there weren't too many people in chat. We could talk to each other and have that conversation and then that then got other people involved. And I think as yeah. a foundation for me, that was, that was such an important foundation to have. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a usual route in, um, but it worked. It worked for that two years. Yeah, I think because it's one of the it's one of the things. There's so many things that you don't know when you get into streaming. I think one of them is the fact that you know everyone talks about streaming to zero people, which is where almost everyone starts. Slightly different now with the likes of TikTok, you mm -hmm. can you can stream to people almost immediately. Uh, but so much of Twitch starts with streaming to zero people, and the fact that you essentially have to carry on like nothing strange is happening. Yeah, that you are in a room on your own with nobody watching you and you have to perform to to zero people if you want to be able to perform when people come yeah. and talk to a few streamers about this. It's a really hard thing to do. So it's interesting that you <clears throat> that you had someone else. That's the hardest thing. And mm -hmm. it's one of the easier things when you get a chat is yeah. that, oh, now I can, now yeah, I've no, got you, someone to have a conversation yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a game changer. 100%. Um, so you, you did that for a couple of years and how how, how much did you build twitch up I, I guess i'm talking about twitch quite a lot in the past really and that clear. yeah i uh, i'm trying to think if i just quickly load my channel up i'll i'll take because it's been if, i don't even know if i know my login um the <laughs> i want to say i got up to what 500 followers on there yeah over two and a half years like uh, and that's that's partly why i made that decision to move over to um tiktok after i took some time out because yeah. as much as it was it was so much fun and yeah. i look back on those days and go like it, it just it was so much fun mm -hmm. i needed to make that change because actually for when i sat down and i went well hang on i've done two and a half years of work and this is what the end result is yeah was that worth it <laughs> yeah. and so you know i, I kind of i really had to sit down and go right when i because I, I took a year out after my son was born yeah um and when i wanted to go back into it i had to really fight myself to go back into it actually because there, yeah. there was a lot of it was going oh, like what's the point because you know if we're going back to the land of three viewers mm -hmm. all that work that i've done is it just going to go and, and in that whole year that i was out um the friend that i streamed with then continued to stream on their own for that mm -hmm. for that whole year as well which i think for them was a really important thing to do as well because i think yeah. that's when we both sort of found our own identities and yeah and sort of branched off um yeah uh so i got to um yeah it was about 500 followers i was on a good stream i was getting 15 people okay on a on a good stream and that was great like i yeah. love that because in my mind i was like if there were 15 people in the room with me like how cool would that be and actually i've got yeah. 15 people just here chatting with me we're playing games we're making connections and i i've always very much been about um not seeing people as a name on the screen and actually as a human being and mm -hmm. and, and connecting with other people is, is is just my favorite thing to do ever yeah I, I love meeting people and hearing their stories and hearing what they're all about and um just through that uh so one, someone who came into one of our streams because at the time like they didn't even know what twitch was mm. they were searching on google halo 3 gameplay <laughs> and like one of our streams came up in the google search nice. they've clicked on it they started watching it and through that i think they've now been streaming for about two and a half years just because they saw it and they were like oh my god this is this is amazing like, i want to do yeah. it too um and i uh, he was from I can't remember where in America, but he's in America. And when I upgraded my capture card, I just sent him my old one. I was like, ah, nice. you, you want to start doing it? Like, go for it, do it. Because like, 
for me, I'm all about building people up and raising them up. I mm-hmm. like if if someone is better than me, fantastic. Like that is my my ultimate aim. If I can help someone out and they then end up being better than me, perfect. Like that, that because they've to be able to give someone a platform to succeed, I think is so important. There there are so many people that could be amazing at what they do if yeah. they're just given a platform to do it. Yeah. Um and I like with the community that I have at the moment, I've got moderators uh, and I've got a community manager now that I, because I've given them that platform, that opportunity to do it, that mm-hmm. in the last week, they've done what, two or three community game nights in our Discord, just off their own back. They've just done it and they, they've hosted nice. quizzes. They've hosted, you know, uh, game nights where everyone can just like get involved. I, I don't even touch it. <laughs> I'm not even, yeah. like I might, I, I, I pop in and sort of join in, but they've been given a platform to try and go you know what like let's try and organize a game night and they're smashing it and i love it and yeah. actually like if they end up finding another content creator with millions and millions of followers uh that then wants to snap them up amazing like I, i've done my job because I, I think that yeah i just i think that's really really important to give them that platform to to go off of yeah that's amazing these are these are all kind of things that you that people don't tell you about, right? The the, the, mm-hmm. the difficulties of finding the right mods and you know finding those people and and you know how how grateful you feel when you do find people that are like, oh, you God. Got, this guy really gets the vibe and they just you know almost immediately and all the mistakes that come before that and you know the challenges you have with community. One of the things that no one told me when I set up my Discord, I kind of assumed that I would go. I'd set up the Discord and go. Everyone will just be friendly and like each other and then. And then every now and then all hell breaks loose. And you go, well, <laughs> what's going on here, guys? This is, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So in that in that year that you were off, yeah, you did you feel like the landscape had changed significantly when you returned? I think in terms of Twitch, no. I think it was exactly the same as where I left it, which is why I didn't want to go back because realistically, you've got to. On Twitch, I mean, they're adding this discoverability stuff in now. Whether it works or not, I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but Mike, especially where I'm someone who doesn't play AAA games, I, I, I don't play games that are that everyone's playing, um, mm-hmm. and that's I, I, I like that. But that those kind of streams are never going to survive on Twitch because you have to search the game, mm-hmm. so you have to rely on the fact that people are trying to find that gameplay anyway and then once you've searched that game you've got a list of streamers that go from you know the top viewership all the way down to the lowest now you know if if the top two rows are even on a really small indie game you're Mm -hmm. 10 7 6 viewers no one's going to look at no one's going to scroll down they're going to look at the ones that are up there right so as someone starting out honestly i think it's impossible on Twitch, un- unless you have got some sort of following on another platform that you're bringing over, mm. um, if you're you know if you're massive on Twitter or you've got a big YouTube channel or you are a personality uh, that people know, and oh by the way now I've got a Twitch channel like bang it, w- it will sort of go like that. But I think yeah. as someone starting out on that platform, you, you just can't do it. Twitch is absolutely dependent on you as a creator bringing people. Absolutely, them. absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, know, no to, one's going to gonna be, find you. Yeah, to be featured is, you know, it's, we used to say this in marketing a lot. Is like the best place to hide a body would be on the second page of Google. Um, yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody ever <laughs> yeah. goes there, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's very same, very similar with Twitch, and even then, I think the, you know, the, the search, you know, are people really searching for new creators, or is it the majority of the time? For me, I came across Twitch streamers because uh, when I first got my PlayStation Five. My friends were all playing Warzone. I was terrible because I hadn't gamed for, you know, 20 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So I started watching YouTube gameplay and realized then that those YouTubers had live streams. And that's how I got into uh, watching live streamers. Okay. uh, Before realizing that the COD community was pretty pretty mean place to be and like yes. finding nice cozy streamers that were like <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. streaming if you want nice to go things. somewhere to get abused then uh yeah, yeah. yeah. by yeah. the streamers and the community <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. um you know uh so yeah it's 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 definitely a, it's definitely a challenging place but i suppose this does open the door to talking about you 
streaming on TikTok, which mm-hmm. is where I know you from. Um, I heard one of the one of the wonderful things, and we kind of hinted at this about TikTok. They haven't paid us to say this. We probably should. No. We probably should hold back a little bit. Really, one <laughs> um, <laughs> of wonderful things about it is you can once you meet the requirements to go live, you can go live and you can have anything from ten to a thousand people in your mm-hmm. in your stream day one really yeah uh so what what was the was there another research process for you to go through to go twitch is a thing uh, tiktok is a thing or had you just realized that more people were going live on there like what was that situation for you that's interesting i I think i had a couple of streams that i did when i first got back into it where i did Mm. a bit of both i did some twitch and i did some tiktok and i noticed not too much but i noticed that there was a lot more engagement on TikTok in terms of not not by a massive amount at all, but I just noticed mm-hmm. people were speaking in there. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, okay. Am I do I just dive in to that fully, or do I? Because you know, where my Twitch channel been dead for a year as well. Like there were some people that were really pleased to see that I was back, but yeah. again, it was it wasn't there was no fireworks particularly. Mm-hmm. So that's when I went. Yeah, you know what? Like let's let's just go for it. And what I loved when I first started uh, going live on TikTok was that whenever someone joined, there's a little notification down the bottom that says, so-and-so has joined. Uh, This person's joined. And the ability for me to instantly then say, hi, Rachel, welcome in. Thanks for joining. Boom. All like that, that was a game changer because you are just, the moment someone joins, for you to to be able to say hello and interact with them, the amount of people early on when I was doing TikTok were like, oh my God, what, you're actually talking to us? Because TikTok <laughs> was being used by so many streamers as just this secondary thing. I'm going to go yeah. live on here. Come to my Twitch channel, by the way. This is yeah. where I am. The amount um, of people you scroll past it go answering, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. responding to chat on Twitch. But they like didn't a year ago, channel. it was it was ridiculous. Like you just yeah. wouldn't have, especially gaming, because a TikTok live back then was a lot of just people going live sort of face to face and sort mm-hmm. of, you know, they might be doing their ironing and they'll go live kind of. It, it, it was kind of one of those things. So yeah. gaming on TikTok was very young a year ago. It was there, but definitely live streaming was quite young. Mm-hmm. and yeah just the the amount of people that would ask oh what game is this and instantly i'd answer them and they'd go wait what <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, i can't believe he's talking back to me yeah um, and i think that that served me really well because i i made it my mission that every single person that came in i'd, I'd say hello to and i'd, I'd respond yeah. to every single message which saying that out loud that that just seems like a given <laughs> like obviously yeah, you're course, gonna yeah. like if somebody like, says somebody hello in your chat room, yeah exactly, yeah like yeah. you're gonna say hello and yeah. i the, the amount of, it still goes on now you've, you've still got people that their main channels are on this account um mm-hmm. they're co-streaming to tiktok and yeah. you know, i've asked oh well, what's this game or hi how are you nothing you just get complete and you will never go back to that that stream ever you, yeah. you you've yeah, got yeah. one chance to make a first impression mm-hmm. um and especially on tiktok where you're scrolling you give each video maybe half a second of your time maybe mm-hmm. um and so especially the way the, the the feed works now if you flick and you get onto a live stream it, cause it's just another flick and you're away from it you've actually got to tap into the live stream to then write a comment to then say hello so the moment they tap in you get that little notification that says so and so's joined yeah that is your opportunity to just get them. And I, I think that was what was really exciting to me was being able to not miss a single opportunity and just yeah. every single person that came in, you could say hello to. And that was really exciting. And you're certainly, like, you know, typical of lots of streamers, I get limited opportunity to go and sit in other people's lives. And when I do, it's, mm-hmm. it's usually for quite a short period of time. Yeah, just to say hello, kind of yeah, show your face. Just, then, yeah, I've yeah. just come off stream, I've uh-huh. noticed you're on. Hello, yeah, have a little flick through, got, yeah. I've got to make my dinner and all that kind of stuff. You know, when you're on different schedules, you kind of cross paths. But you know, every time I'm in your stream, the the it's definitely vibrant. The numbers are good. You know, I don't don't like to talk too much about viewership numbers for streamers because you know they do fluctuate. They do go up and down. Absolutely. Oh god. Yeah. Especially on platforms like TikTok, where it is you know can be quite transient in terms of how people interact with the platform. 
but it feels to me like your uh your growth on tiktok over since you since you started mm -hmm. uh has been more significant than it was on uh, twitch in the same oh. period of time would that be fair to say oh god yeah i mean i'm on what yeah we've just recently hit twenty five thousand followers um and it's going just over the year mark so that's kind of within a year that's where we've got up to which is mad and just crazy <clears throat> the interesting thing is that the, the interesting thing about tiktok is the number of followers doesn't always Absolutely necessarily not. reflect the number of people in I their think, lives yeah. and your lives always seem to have very very good numbers and great interaction and uh, yeah i think it's yeah i i don't think follower numbers especially on uh especially on tiktok really matter um mm -hmm. because at, at, same with any platform but if you've if you've got a thousand followers not you know not all a thousand of those are going to come into your live stream not all a thousand of those are going to watch your video so it doesn't it it doesn't really matter but what mm -hmm. i do love to see is when people have been in a live stream once and then they come back another time and yes. then you start to see their name again and you go oh okay like we're, we're mm -hmm. starting to to build something with with that person yeah um and yeah i, I think for for me it's it, interactivity is the number one priority in mm -hmm. in live streaming because if you wanted to just watch someone play games you'd watch a youtube video right yes. like if, if the whole point in a live stream and a whole you know the, the the pull of it is that you can actually talk to that person and so why wouldn't you <laughs> why wouldn't you talk and, it, and it, it's mm -hmm. i don't know it just seems so simple to me to to want to have that conversation and to have that connection yeah. um and i do attribute a lot of my regular viewership to my discord server i think mm -hmm. um because that is where my core community are and that yep. is where if i've got them into the discord server i know that i will keep them there yep. like for as long as they are in a position to be able to watch live content i i, I just yep. i just because everyone in there is just so friendly and so lovely and so mm -hmm. We we've created this this bubble where everyone feels safe. They can be their own person, and everyone is just really supportive of the of of each other. And it's it's just a fantastic place to be. And and I like to think that people come into the live streams not for me, but for the other people that are in chat that are interacting with them as well. Yeah. Um, because again, that sense of community and and, and communities are. A word that gets thrown a lot, uh, around quite a lot i think you kind of oh you know my, my community this and uh i've built this community but the, the community is a really strong word to use mm -hmm. i think and actually you know if you do have a community that is a group of people that will look after each other no matter what right if, yeah. you, if you're in a community you have each other's back you yeah. uh are supportive of any endeavor that someone in your community goes for right and i think the there's a lot of uh a lot of people that use the word community quite freely and i don't i i really take full responsibility for building a proper community and i think that's that's yeah. what's really important community community is different to following it's, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah 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 million percent so it's phenomenal to see that growth and obviously it means that you know it feels like tiktok's quite an exciting platform it, certainly in its current state and, mm -hmm. and even now i think gaming on tiktok is still quite young that's definitely more vibrant than it was a year ago but still feels quite young and i think there's areas that more established streaming platforms have, have done that tiktok might look to take on things like raids yeah. and that kind of thing but also there's you know there's areas that those other platforms really absolutely need to, i think to, in to the early days when uh, a year ago when i started gaming on tiktok it was quite a new thing and I did get good numbers through that. Um, mm -hmm. I the thing that really kicked it all off on TikTok was I was playing a game called I Am Fish, uh, where you are a little goldfish initially that goes to other fish, and your aim is to reach the sea, right? Yeah. Uh, but the whole point of it is that the controls are ludicrously difficult. Like you've got to, uh, you know, with one of the sticks on the controller, that is just to wag 
the, the, the back fin. You've then got to <laughs> angle it right. You've got to jump into places. It's like Dark Souls, but for fish, right? It's right, the most okay. frustrating game in the world. Um, yeah. And you can choose to have it on sort of normal controls or the really difficult controls. And I just played it on the really difficult controls. Uh, and one of my clipped videos of that, I think we're on, uh, yeah, I think it, we're now on what 5.7 million views, right? That, that, that is the video that then just went bang. And yeah. there were the live streams after that, I was getting 1500, 2000 people in for about a week, every stream. And oh my God, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was, I was not ready for that at yeah. all. And everyone wishes to have that kind of viewership. Mm -hmm. but when your chat is just going like you can't even see anything right uh it's it was just so overwhelming um but again as you say it all fluctuates and everything goes down and then the next week you're back on 20 right yeah. uh and then you've got people coming in that go oh hang on a minute like you had a thousand plus last week now you've only got 20 yeah. what's going on there and I've, there are a few people on TikTok who, who's, whose core job it is to come and tell you how many people you've got in your life. I yeah. love those people. Just two people. Yeah. Oh, there's five now. Yeah. There's seven. Oh, yeah. no, it's gone down yeah. again. Thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> great. Appreciate it. Appreciate your input. Um, yeah. uh, I, do, I just say to them, you know I can see. Don't yeah, you I know I'm, I've got the figures. I am aware. It's okay. I, I, I'm still here. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's fine. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I would, you know... I think everyone does need on a platform a bit of a boost to actually yeah. get started. And I would absolutely say that that video gave me the boost that I needed to then start to build something. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, to say that I started from zero followers and I only live streamed and here I am now, I don't think it would be fair to say. I think mm -hmm. from that video, I gained, what, 5,000 followers from that video. Um and that was a really good starting point because then I was starting really everything from five, 6,000 followers and kind of going up from there. Um, so, uh, and, and that was a nice foothold to have. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely say that helped in the early days. But, but that's, gaming... There's, a, there's an exciting thing there though, isn't there? <clears> that I, I, I still think you're, you're, you're slightly playing down. You know, <laughs> just to say you started, down, you started from zero. You, you know, everyone does start from zero. That is an accomplishment to, to have a video um, to, to have a video that does tens yeah, of thousands or absolutely. hundreds of thousands yeah, 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 of definitely. To, to do you know to do millions is is, is a huge thing. Um, but what's exciting to me is that and what you realise quite quickly about TikTok is that is still now I think available to pretty much anyone. Absolutely. Uh, I've had absolutely. one video not do not quite those numbers and unfortunately for me not in the gaming space. Um <laughs> you know I have, to, I have to be thankful to the the dad and daughter Amsterdam story for getting my viral <laughs> video. But you know it, it I did that with uh not very many followers. You know yep. anyone can and I've got I've got another account where I just post non-related gaming things. And actually, I can go on there and just talk rubbish about you know um, whatever I want, and there is there is an audience out there for that stuff. Mm -hmm. There is an audience out there for for different types of things. So that's what's exciting about the platform. If you're consistent and you're creating content that is valuable and has good quality, you know all of the kind of buzzwords that we talk about when we're talking about content creation. Oh, this it really winds me up when people talk about algorithm, right? And oh, I, I've I've been banned from the algorithm. It's it's it's, it's not that right. It's mm -hmm. it like yes, there's probably a very complicated bit of code at the end yes. of it all but but at a root uh you know thing or all, all that they're looking for is how long are they spending on your live stream or video number mm -hmm. one number two are they engaging in that mm -hmm. that's it right like it, it really is that simple like if if someone is watching your uh full one minute video because they love every single second of it uh and actually they might watch it again right because they they loved it so much they're going to show their partner oh look at this right so that's uh, that's number one number two have they liked it have they commented on it mm -hmm. if, if you've got those three things and people are regularly watching your whole video and they're liking and they're commenting th it, it will just it will just do its own thing um and yes i've also been there where i've gone oh you know uh, this video oh it's, it's only on 200 views 
TikTok must have uh, must not be pushing it. It's their fault. But actually, you know, when I look back at that video now, I go, it's because it's not very good. <laughs> like, uh, and, yeah. you know, I, I, I hate being that person. But if like if your video is good and people want to watch it, it will get views. It will. I think, yeah, I think there's a this is something I think that most people who discover if if you create content at any kind of volume, you know, for the past year, pretty consistently, I've, I've probably tried to put anywhere between two and four videos out a day. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's <laughs> lemonade. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, big. It's, 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 a, it's a commitment that I thought I'd try and make. Wow. And I think once you get to a certain point, you can definitely drop that back down. I, I don't think that's necessarily always a good thing, uh, but it's, it's, it's what I strive to do is that you can't associate the amount of time you put into a thing and how much you like a thing and how good you think it is. <laughs> you can't, you can't equate. I think people equate quality with how many views it should get, but in yeah. terms of like the quality of the things, like I could create a really high quality piece of content on TikTok about mm-hmm. old Roman coins. Yeah. And listen, if it was on radio four, I'd be absolutely <laughs> booming, but you know, for TikTok, Radio 4 for people listening. Is- you say <laughs> that. I just don't need to explain that. You say that, but there's audience for everything on that platform. Yeah, I suppose I suppose what I mean is that I think I've spent four hours on a 30-second video and mm-hmm. it not do very well, and I've yep. spent literally two minutes on a video and it go viral. Yep. And, and, yeah. And there are, there are a whole range of different variables that go into why that stuff happens, you know, the 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 popularity of a subject at a time how many people are searching for it how many people are looking for it whether that stuff's being presented on the for you page at that time all the engagement stuff you're looking at tiktok yeah. will always always initially push your video out to 200 300 people see what it get engagement it gets and then push it out to another go group, from there another group yeah. and another group it always happens but i think if you equate how long you spend on a video and how much you like it if you think that is going to mean numbers on the other end you're almost always wrong because it's not necessarily about that. Um, good quality content can be done very, very quickly, and highly engaged sure. content can be produced very, very quickly. I definitely need to be better at that. I, but it is a time thing, and I'm sure mm-hmm. you know. I'm sure we can talk about time and how little of it we all have. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, if, if I had the time to put out two videos a day, I would. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yeah. I, I think I need to be better at trying to find, trying to carve out really high quality bits of productive time that I go, mm-hmm. right, for this 45 minutes, I am going to create yeah. two clips from a stream that I've done. All of my, all, you know, um, all, all of the content that I've done recently and I've posted are clips from streams because that is at the moment all I have the time to do. I'd yeah. love to find the time to experiment with a couple of other formats. I did a and I did a couple of videos on a and a I did a, a reaction video at some point mm-hmm. that actually got the same amount of views that I'd normally get, which I found quite interesting. But I, yeah, I, yeah. It, having the time, I would like to branch out into other stuff. <laughs> I, I actually found it, uh, found it slightly easier to separate my live stream content to my actual feed content purely because the time it took me to go through a stream was that such a long long, yeah. process in itself yeah um the the actually i'd go it's quicker for me to 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 create brand new content rather than going <laughs> to curate content from my from existing stream um hmm. but yeah it's, it's definitely a challenge and i suppose the, the I, I suppose my thing is that if people are too precious about what it is that they put out you know i think good is is good and done good is, is good enough yeah <laughs> if it's good enough just get it out. Um, yeah. You know, there, there will always be someone who create, especially on short form. For for long form YouTube, I think it's different. Oh, I think, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think you uh, you absolutely spend all of that time on production value and quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for short form content, it's going to die within two weeks anyway. Yeah. Um, you might get a video that pops off late. I've had a couple of those of all mm-hmm. the videos that I've done, but. It just yeah, if it's it's gonna last two weeks, so don't you know? Whereas YouTube, you've got a video that's gonna last you, uh, you know, potentially years. You know, you've got some mm-hmm. videos that are going on there that are six, seven years old and still getting views because because yeah. it can, you know. So yeah. I think that's something to to think about for short form is just get it out because it's yeah. Try try different things, experiment, 
because like you say it's not going to hurt you at yeah. all it will it will it will it'll either work or it won't and sometimes the things that you least expect to work will be the things that absolutely blow up yeah you know i think <laughs> it's sure. very rare that people go this is this is the video that's going to go viral more often than not for the majority of people oh, no. it is a mistake no yeah it was, uh, the my i am fish video complete yeah. like never ever thought in a million years that would that would happen yeah um and, and actually when i look at it i th- I don't think it's one of the funnier clips that I've done. Uh, I, I look at it and go, like, what? It's, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I just don't like. It was of all the moments in that game, that was absolutely yeah. not even on my top ten of like funniest moments. But yeah, it, sometimes it just works, I guess. Yeah, so that's it. So what's what's next for you then, Peter? Where, where's where, where the, the the stratosphere? Where are you heading? Oh God, don't uh, look. I want to be in a position that by next year I can go part-time at my full-time job. Mm-hmm. That, that, is, that is my aspiration because I know, and, and this is always the difficult thing when you've got a family to worry about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think had I done this and been at this point five years ago, I would have just done it. I would have just mm-hmm. quit my job and just dove into this for six months and and just to see what happens because you've got no risk you've got Mm -hmm. uh well very low risk anyway yeah um and and i know that if i did that now i know that i probably could do it but Mm -hmm. the risk is too high when you've got a wife and kid to worry about (laughs) you know and and you are that that person bringing in that income it is a humongous risk to take that i just i could not ever do so yeah my my process has to be slightly different and I have to sort of take that slow, but by next, but yeah, by, by next year, I want to be able to be at least four days at work and then have that day as a content day. If I can manage more than that, then, then fantastic. Uh, but that, that is kind of the ultimate aim really to start to slowly phase out my full-time job and actually work my way into this. I think. No, well, I'm sure you're going to absolutely smash it. The well, final thing, hoping. Yeah, mate, you will. You're doing. <laughs> I mean, you, I, I, I know. You, you know, you're, you're kind of shying away from it, but I, there's definitely when I scroll into your stream, and I'm sure this is the same for other people. And it's a weird thing, right? We we met face to face at the event mm. today. Yeah, phenomenal. And there is an odd thing of going. Oh, here's someone I kind of kind of know, <laughs> but we've only I've kind of spoke to you in passing yeah, on yeah. the internet. And I think there is always a thing of going, I know these people, but they sure as fuck don't know me. Like, I'm not that, they don't know me. These guys are... But anyway, you, you get into that situation and, you know, definitely scrolling through your... When you scroll onto a stream where you see people and you go, they are where... They're in an area that I want to get to. They're at numbers that I want to hit. They're mm-hmm. with a community that, you know, I want to create. That definitely, whether you like it or not, you become a person that people aspire to be more like or you you create a success that people aspire to 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 replicate so <laughs> you, you've got like, you've got to take it on mate. Oh, this is it god you, you're basically That's TikTok crazy. famous now and uh, just... you know you ah. it'll be a day when you're walking the streets opening oh, the god. next peter webby burger That's or whatever at a, a local <laughs> and being mobbed by god thousands dear. of people yeah. but anyway Final question before I let you go mm. back to your to your bank holiday weekend. This is people look. People need to respect the grind here. This is bank holiday Monday. <laughs> we are both sat in a room on our own for, for some for some sun. good reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are sat in a room on our own recording this. Uh, just as a final thing, what would your for for content creators starting out today or looking to grow? What would your um, you know short sharp advice be to get started or to start to see that growth? Short and sharp, because I could go on for ages. Um, uh, Okay, I think the most important thing is to be authentic, number one, right? Mm -hmm. People can see through uh, you faking laughing or you faking enjoying yourself. Like, people can see through that, no matter how good you think you are at it. Uh, and I've been there. I've been playing games that I think are really popular. And I, oh, oh, isn't this funny? People can see through that so quickly. And, and I think people then lose that respect for you very like so quickly. You get one chance to make a, a first impression. 
Um, and I think the second thing would be after being authentic is to really treat every single person as if they are a human being. Um, and I know that that feels like it goes without saying, but um, I, I, I love to see people as human beings and I love to connect. And I think that's why a lot of people come back uh, because they enjoy being, I don't know, it's, it's so difficult to describe. I, th I think it's just that, yeah, authenticity, I suppose. If, if it was one word, it would be that. Like, nobody can be better at being you than you, right? Uh, and, and actually, when you're, tr when you're trying to be someone else, people, people see that. So just, just be you uh, and be authentically you and people will fall in love with you because like that is pe people love to see people for who they really are and i think that's that, that's really important perfect love it listen man thank you so much for your time i appreciate you taking time out no nah, mate uh, it's been amazing bank holiday really good and, yeah and uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll have to do this again in a year's time and you can yeah well if you've, still, if you've still got time for me then look listen we'll, 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 we'll flip it we'll, we'll flip it round right we'll uh I'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see where you end up in a year's time as well yeah we'll yeah. uh we'll, we'll do hopefully some the prison will give me access to the computer yes <laughs> <laughs> well look, we'll see hey look well, it's, it's gonna be good but no honestly it's been uh you know even in the last week just a, a pleasure to get to know you a little bit more a pleasure to actually meet you properly um and I, i'm really excited to see what you do as well you know i think it's we, we, we're all on this weird journey together right and there's room for everyone i i hate this gatekeepy kind of stuff that goes on where it's and which i was very guilty of at first mm -hmm. by the way we was talking about research earlier um yeah. and about i've done you know done all this research it's mine i i've i've done this research i'm not going to tell anyone no, like it, there's there's enough people in the world for everyone to watch the people that want to create uh, and that's yep. that's that's been the way of for throughout history. If you've been a performer, uh, you know, even thousands of years ago, just because there were two performers doesn't mean that they, they weren't going to get seen, you know. So uh, I'm I'm all about helping people out. If anybody needs anything at any point, I will do my absolute best to help them. Uh, and it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this with you today. It's been some really good questions, actually, as well. Really made me think about a couple of oh. things. <laughs>